Hello, friends. Hello. Oops, I'm hitting cords here. Hello. Good, uh, good Thursday evening. Unless you're in other parts of the world, then happy Thursday or happy Friday. Hello. Welcome to my live. I am just going to make sure everything's situated. And there you guys are. Hi. Hello, Tori. Hello, Lorley. So happy to see you guys here. So how's everybody's week going? I can tell you that my week has been so much better this week. Last week was like, I don't even know. <laughs> it was a week. And then this week already feels just so much better. So much better. Um, we started having some help here with our kids. So this Monday, they went to our family friend's house for the day. Um, it's, it's so funny to call them like a family friend cause they're really just kind of like family. So they just, you know, just, they went to our family's house and then on Wednesday they went to my parents' house. So we've had two kid free days this week, which will be something that we're carrying forth. So now they'll go on Mondays and they'll go on Wednesdays and, um, man, having even just one day, even just having one day without, having to entertain my kids all day was just, oh my gosh, it was so good. It was so good. So I got a ton done this week, which feels good. And then also was able to spend the days when they were home with me actually going and playing and being with them. So it just felt good all the way around. And hopefully that will continue to be that way. So yes. Oh no, I just read somebody's back in full lockdown. Oh no, Joanne. I'm so sorry. Aw. I'm so sorry that you guys are back into lockdown. Man, just when, you know, it's crazy. Joanne, where are you at? Um, where are you at in the world where you guys are shut down? Yes. Hey, Vanessa. Good morning to you as well. Yes. And Caleb, it has been a long time. I'm glad you're here. I hope you're doing all right. Um, you know, and, and that things are things are okay in your neck of the woods over there. So, hey, Kelly. Boston and first time here. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you, Juanita. I look great. Thank you. Uh, I did nothing to myself. I took my hair out of my ponytail because I, I craft in the basement. And when the weather starts to get nice outside and warmer, my house has to work a little bit extra to keep it like the temperature we like, which means that the air conditioning will often kick on or some, you know, it just doesn't heat the house as much anymore. So my basement just feels so cold lately. So yeah, I'm like layered up and ready for this. So yes. Hey, Stephanie and Mallory. Wait, much. Where'd you say much? Enjoyed your chat with Allie. Ooh, yes. Did you guys watch who here? If you are on the chat and you guys were in the um, live thing from Wednesday last night over on One Little Word, let me know that you were there. So uh, funny thing is when, you, when we did the live chat with her and I, I think she could see comments potentially, but I couldn't see any comments. I probably should have had my iPad with me so I could like watch myself, but then see the comments because I couldn't see anything. I just was like chatting. Yes, Montana. I love Montana. Montana is one of my favorite states in all of the United States. You are so lucky to be there. So lucky. Um, yes. So for lives, I typically do my Thursday lives every week. Sometimes things come up. So like what is today? The 8th. So I'll be here this week and next week. The week after that, I actually get my second vaccine at the same time as my live. So I believe that's April 22nd that I will be skipping that week. And I'll just let you guys know ahead of time, like, hey, don't forget, this is the week. I'm getting dose number two and uh, we're not going to be live this week. But generally, yes, every Thursday, same time, I'm here. A lot of times I'm working on just stories, which is what I'm doing today. Uh, sometimes I'll work on, on a project. So like day in the life, I'll do live or probably I'll do week in the life live again this year just because it helps keep me accountable to finishing that project. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's a weekly thing. So yay. Um, yes. All right, you guys. So uh, plans for tonight. I have a grand total of five stories to put together. Some of them have older Feed Your Craft products. So I have two projects that I am using the, what's it called? More, I think it's More Please. 
is the name of that kit, which is, I, I linked all of them in the description box this time. I actually filled out my description box prior to my video. So um, the kits that I'm using, if I could find them, I linked them up. Most of them are available digitally, um, I think. And except for the color cast design stuff, I have stuff for that for that product as well. So I'm, I'm working with more please. I'm working with um, something about celebrate, celebrate today, maybe. And uh, what a year are the three kits I have feed your craft stories with. And then I also have two additional stories using some of the color cast designs products from the January. So this isn't a much older kit, but I just want to get these stories done. So that's my plan for today. I'm going to go ahead and flip you guys over so you can see top down my desk and we're just gonna get started crafting. So let's do this. Uh, caution, if you, this is your first time, it will be a little shaky because I'm literally gonna take my phone off of one stand and put it into another. Uh, so I apologize for that. One day I'll be fancy and I'll have multiple cameras, but for now, I just have the one. So let's do this. <laughs> Okay, and hopefully not hit any crazy buttons while we're at it. Okay, so <clears throat> make sure you guys are kind of straight. Wait, what? Photoshop trick. Okay, let's see. What did you say? I missed it. Welcome. I tried your Photoshop trick with placing the pieces into the card and it was so easy oh like for um Mallory do you mean for like like laying out placing the pieces onto the card or or do you mean like okay I think I know what you're saying like um when I'll when I make the shape on Photoshop and print it and then all I have to do is just stick stuff down I think that's what you're talking about Mallory you have to correct me if I'm wrong but that's really exciting I love when um when I can do stuff and like, like digital chipboard pieces. Oh, okay. Yes. And then, um, this is onto the card. Well, that's so awesome. I'm really excited about that. Yeah. I love, I love, love, love when, uh, when I do something and then you guys do it too. It's so fun. Yes. Hey everybody. You guys, I'm so excited you're all here. Okay. So first project, I'm going to work on these color cast design ones first, just cause they're big. And let me just set some is to the side. Okay, so the first one I am telling is a story that I laid, well, <laughs> I called it comfy and cozy because that's what my acrylic said. Um, now, this January kit here was one that I actually did a project planning live with. Gosh, I don't even know when that was. It was probably in February would be my guess. So um, I completed all of my projects fairly early and I was like, hey, do you guys want to just like hang tight and I'll... Uh, <laughs> I'll project plan these things and you guys said yes so uh, that's what we did so I do have this one kit that has a project plan on it I'm trying to see what I was gonna do here oh I know what I was gonna do shoot I need to go get a border punch and I need some vellum so um anyway my whole point to that is that um, if you were on that live, you might recognize the story potentially if you guys are here for that. So what I did is I took a picture of a bunch of our blankets. So it's like just a picture of stuff. Why not? Right. So I have three of our blankets. We are hoarders of fuzzy blankets. We love them. I have way more than three, but these were the three that the colors kind of like went nicely together. So I have a picture of a bunch of fuzzy blankets, and then my plan is to put some vellum across, which I need to go grab that. And then I've got this comfy and cozy title with a comfy and cozy subtitle because I guess re repetition, right? And then this fun house guy, and then I've got my journaling, which I am going to do some scallop, I think is my plan, up here and just create like a multiple layered top piece because it's pretty. Um, these papers <clears throat> all came from one of the paper person collections. They are not like these were not Kelly's designs. They were some other collection. I want to say probably Maggie Holmes just based on the color, <laughs> the colors and the patterns, but I could be wrong about that. I don't really know. 
maybe probably one of you guys knows. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go grab some vellum. I'm gonna grab a butter, a butter, a butter punch. I'm gonna grab a border punch and then I'll be back. They're just like right next to me. I just have to step away for like two seconds. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. The most complicated part of that is I, I literally have to lock all of my cabinets. Otherwise my son will get into them and like, who knows what he's capable of. I mean, we all know he's capable of a lot. Uh, so we just, we just got to protect the goods. Okay. So let's figure out how, uh, how tall I want to make this vellum piece. I'm thinking maybe to, well, Let's see here. I'm thinking maybe two and maybe two and a quarter. So I don't want it to be too much. No, I like you better there. I'll do two and a half. We'll do two and a half. And then if I have to go skinnier than that, then so be it. We'll go skinnier. Duh. Hey, Caitlin. Driving, where are you guys going? Two and what did I say? A half? Okay, I hope I said two and a half. Well, like I said, if I go too big, that's fine, right? Who else did I see here? Ingen, hi, Ingen. Michelle, you guys. I love Thursdays so much. So, I um, last Thursday, I had to cancel because, well, okay, I'll back up to go forward. Two weeks ago, I had to cancel my Thursday because I got my vaccine which was like, cool, awesome, best reason to cancel ever. Then last week on like Wednesday, Aaron told me that he had to work on Thursday night. He's like, hey, I have to work on Thursday night. And I was like, really? He's like, yes, yeah, so you're going to have to do like baths and take care of the kids. So I had to cancel last week too. I like the last minute and I wasn't happy about it. So I rescheduled for uh, Saturday morning. So I did, well, technically afternoon. Okay. I actually think two and a half is probably good. Yeah, like I don't, I probably shouldn't. You know what? I have a big old sheet of vellum. Why don't we just make sure that we're sure here? Um. Anyway, so I rescheduled to noon for me on um, Saturday. And it was so different to do it during the day than it was to do it at, at night. Um, and different, not in a bad way, just different. But... Like, um, um, it was a, a mostly different crew that came, which was pretty cool. So I got to um, have a bunch of people from uh, the UK were able to come. Because right now, I believe, time-wise for them, this is like the middle of the night. So it just isn't a great time. But, so maybe I need to, like, do some random... Yeah, see, I'm glad I, I made that shorter. I think that's better. Okay. Anyway, tangents. Um, my point is that I love Thursdays and it feels good to be back to being on Thursday. And I think I should do more random, like during the day lives when, um, maybe on like kid free days, you know, or something, because it was so nice to be able to enjoy like hanging out with some UK peeps. Okay, so I'm just positioning this into the middle here and I'm going to grab my tiny attacher and staple it on here. Yes, Gidget. I, okay, so I love this house too. And it's so funny because I almost thought about giving it away because I didn't know what to do with it. I was like, I don't know what to do with this piece when I was project planning. And on the video, on the live, while I was project planning, somebody told me to put it with this one like with this kit. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll do it. Cause number one, I can use my stuff. And number two, it's so pretty, you know, I don't want to give it away. Also, do you guys take the backings off of your acrylic pieces? Because somebody, I never did before. And then somebody pointed out to me that, I, that, you know, they were surprised that I didn't because apparently they're like more brilliant or the colors are better when you take it off. I don't know. What is your stances on that? I'm curious. Also, I haven't paid attention to, your, attention to the chat at all. 
Yes. Oh, that's so nice, Etienne, that they're going swimming now. I need to get my kids in swim lessons. They need to learn how to swim. It's funny because um, that's what I used to do. I used to teach swim lessons to kids uh, and adults. And I, um, well, I ran an aquatics facility. So I was a lifeguard to begin with, a lifeguard and a swim instructor, and then moved up the ranks. And um, I'm going to just stick this one down. Moved up the ranks and eventually became a manager for it. So then I used to train people to be lifeguards. So I used to be a lifeguard instructor, which was really cool. That was probably one of my favorite jobs I ever had, which makes a lot of sense because I really like teaching adults and I don't particularly love teaching kids. So it makes a lot of sense that being a lifeguard instructor was more fulfilling. Okay. Yes, that's awesome, Stephanie. Yes. Lazy. Okay, so Jessica, are there, so like if I take it, okay. Okay, so this one is like a really light, like creamy pink color. It's so beautiful. If I take the backing off of this, is my adhesive going to show through because it's light? I did it for the first time on a, a teal colored one and I couldn't see the adhesive. Uh, so I figure that maybe that's how it is for all of them now, but I'm not totally sure. Yes. Wait, yes, I will not be able to see it. <laughs> all right, let's get this guy on here. So pretty. All right. Unless you get an even layer of liquid glue. Okay, so I will be able to see it. Cool, then I'm just going to leave the backing on this one. Because this one is like, I don't know, it's just really light. And also, it doesn't bother me to keep the backing on. Because, I don't know, I think it looks fine. Also, it's okay that it's not totally, like, transparent and stuff. Because, um, yeah, I already have a super light background on it. Okay, we're doing it. You will be able to see it. Okay, cool, awesome. Do Allie's words have? <laughs> no acrylic pieces. Really? Oh, shoe in. I love the acrylic pieces. They are some of my favorites because they add dimension and stuff. And I am somebody, like, I really don't care about um, bulkiness. I mean... You guys know me. You've seen my December Daily album. You've seen my Week in the Life album. Like, they are beastly. And that does not bother me because it's just fun. I like to work with texture and dimension. So, I have no shame. I'll put everything on it in a minimalist way. <laughs> I will minimalistically add lots of dimension and texture. Do Allie's words have the backing? No, they do not. No, Allie's words do not. Um, now, she's not doing the acrylic words anymore because now she's doing the plastic ones to help cut down on bulk. I know she had a, a bunch of people that um, didn't like using them. I'm just going to position this here because they were so bulky. So, hey, Lilani. Happy Thursday. Sorry, I'm like bending over all weird. Okay. There we go. We're hole punched. This, you guys, if you have this six hole punch thing for, for an album like this, I cannot recommend highly enough making yourself a template. I know I've watched Allie on her um, video. She uses like a plastic page protector and I can just never get that right. Like I try to take it back out and then it slips and then it's wrong and all these things. So it took me way too long to one day be like, you know what, I'm just going to make a template and, and lo and behold, everything was so much easier. So the other thing I'm going to do now, um, my vellum is only attached right now by these two staples, right? So it's, it's on there fine, but I would like it to stay a little bit more stuck down. So what I'm going to do is add some adhesive on the underside. I'm just going to stick it in there with my finger and then I can stick it to the photo and we won't see it because it'll be under these acrylic pieces, right? So we're just gonna 
finagle that a little bit, stick it down, and then see it gives it a little bit more stability. So I might stick some under that comfy and cozy acrylic too, or not acrylic, wood veneer. Yes, still working. Ooh, but you might be, Leilani, where are you at? Are you over in, um, on the West Coast? I, I feel like I know this, but I forget if you're over in like California area. Um, which, so time-wise for you guys right now, it's what, like four-ish? Four, four thirty? Yeah. Here it's like we just ate dinner. <laughs> time differences are so weird. <laughs> it's so weird because it like, doesn't it just like take you out of your bubble? Like you just think that everybody has the exact same experiences at the exact same time and we don't. It's so funny. Okay, so this is the only border punch I own. Um, just because I wasn't really into scrapbooking during the time that border punches were really popular, but I still think they're really pretty. So what I'm going to do, I have three cards, uh, three different colors, and I'm going to do one strip of each of them that I then want to add. Oh, my desk going to shake a whole bunch. I'm sorry. Anyway, I want to add them onto my journaling page thing. Okay, one more. I need to get one that's just like a scallop, like that doesn't have all the fancy stuff in it, but use what you got, right? Use what you got. So there we go. There's number one. Here it is. Hello, Ariel. Is it Ariel? Do you say your name Ariel or is it Ariel? Ariel? No, it's Ariel. It's got to be, right? I think I'm saying that right. If I'm saying that wrong, you can tell me. It's okay. I won't be offended. And then I'll try to do better. Um, Alberta, Canada, 5.30, 6.20, Central Time. Oh, okay. Ooh, so do you work late, Leilani, or um, are you just working late today? Or are you working from home? Because I feel like now that everybody's kind of working from home, we just, like, work all the time. At least it feels kind of like that. Oh, boy, this one's thick. Uh, all right. I love border punches. Yeah, they're so pretty. Okay, so I'll show you a, a spread I did with this border punch. Some of you probably have already seen it. Many of you may have already seen it, but I did it a long time ago, so maybe not. Um, what the heck? Apparently I broke it. Maybe. No, we're okay. We're good. How in the heck did that happen? Whatever. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> by which I mean we'll find out later if it's all good but hopefully we're all good anyway I will show you a spread that I made um a long time ago I did it for my son uh, let me pull his album it's right here and it's one of my favorite spreads of all time I did it for story kit crush and it is right here and it's so pretty so if you have border punches this is something you can do. I don't know how clear it'll come in, but I, I did like strips and I did it kind of ombre-ish. I thought about doing like a full ombre effect on here, but when I did it, it didn't look as, I don't know, it just didn't look as pretty. I liked it like this. But anyway, this border punch, you just like line up a whole bunch of them and make it into a background. So pretty. Anyway, I don't know. You just made me think of other projects with border punches. And I think that's literally the only other thing I've made with this border punch. So it is what it is. <laughs> thank you yeah so there you go so there's a fun way to pull out those old punches and get them used so now what I have this is just some journaling I did on a three by eight white canvas printed it off trimmed it out and all we're gonna do is add these onto here to give this some like pretty prettiness because why not I think that sounds good also I should probably trim them down I also could have just done the other side and it would have been, you know, the right size. But why do things the easy way when you can do them the hard way? <laughs> okay, one, two, and three. And then let's add them on here. Okay. Yes, pull them out. Pull them out. Pull out your punches. Okay. So we're going to go, let's see, I'm thinking maybe we'll do the blue and then the pink and then this like pretty green. Is that what I want to do? 
I might want to do the pink on top just to bring in more of that pinkish color. So what if I get green and then blue and then pink? Nope, I like it the other way better. Okay. Ooh, last try. Blue. It'll pull in the blues. <laughs> we just got to try it out till we like it. Let's see. That might be the that might be the winner. I'm going to call it the winner. I wonder. Okay, I lied. We're doing something different. I'm doing this one again. I don't want the green. <laughs> I changed my mind on the green. So we're going to do that again. And hopefully this still works. <laughs> Two things out. Caleb, what was in your Allie Edwards package that you got? What did you get? I have gotten way too many things. That's all there is to it. Just way too many things. But, oh, God, so, so strong. And I missed a spot. No. Um, okay, let's line you up in here. Where do you go? Like right there, hopefully. Okay, I think I did that right. Sure. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I ordered, at first I ordered one of the yellow story album. Well, I call them a story album, but the six by eight album. So I got a yellow six by eight album. And then I, um, then I, I was like, you know what? I kind of want to get another one because I'm running out of room on my, in my son's album, which is the one I just pulled out. So I'm running out of room on that one. And, um, yes, see, that was the right move, right move. Um, so I need one for him and I already ran out of room on Izzy's. So I needed a new one for her. So I ended up getting two of the yellow albums because in two separate orders, I wish I would have just gone with my instinct and gotten both of them at the same time. But of course, you know, again, why do the easy thing when you can just do it the hard way? <laughs> okay, so we are just going to layer these puppies up on here. And then oh, I should probably trim you off with scissors. So, oh, hey, Mel. Tracy, I have not been paying attention to you guys. I'm sorry. I will pay attention to you in just a second. Just as soon as I finish this uber complicated border punch scallop. All right. Let's see, I probably should have put this higher up. Let's put you higher up because, yeah. It just doesn't look very even. So maybe we'll put you there instead. And then you can go too high, too high. Ugh. <laughs> Welcome to live. Welcome to lives. All right, so there we go. I think that looks good. That looks good, that looks even. Let's trim this again, and then we'll call this one a day. And that was fun, except you're crooked. So adjust and straighten. All right, there we go. So that is spread number one, done and done. Um, and basically all my journaling says is um, we love fuzzy blankets. <laughs> We love them a lot. So this will go outside of a page protector. This will go inside of a three by eight page protector. And that'll be that. That'll be the story, which turned out really pretty. So let me put this one aside and then we'll work on the next one here. Okay. All right. A bunch of planner pads. Yes. Yes. The planner pad was... Um, she, I think she's discontinuing that, I'm pretty sure. So she put every all of that stuff on like major sale, which was super fun. Um, and then the timestamp is I just recently got the timestamp and I don't know why it took so long to get the time roller stamp because now I'm using it on like all of my projects and it's just you know it's it's really good. Okay, so this story, um, this one was totally 100% inspired by the acrylic piece, of course. Well, <laughs> when I do my project planning, they typically are like inspired by the pieces, but time to shine. 
Time to Shine immediately made me think of Izzy's first dance re re rehearsal, dance recital that she did. Um, and she hasn't done one since because her second year uh, was, was when we had COVID. So she's not, you know, we haven't been, she's not been in dance anymore, um, which is sad. <laughs> and I don't know if she misses it that much. I bet she does. I'm going to say that she does. And maybe she'll do it again, but yeah. Okay, I had an alarm go off. Okay, so what do we got here? So I've got bows, I've got hearts, I've got this. I wonder if I was going to put that down here. Maybe. And then I've got this cute little photo of her. So a cute photo of her, this. Let me see what else I have in here. It's been a while since I put all this stuff together. Um, so it's like opening presents and remembering what I had, <laughs> you know, good times. Love this. Remember this. Yes. Okay. So I've got the acrylic here that I'm going to put on the page. And then I also had a bunch of these florals, which I had fussy cut out for one of the sketches I did a while back. This was the February sketch that I did over in the Mighty Network that um, the Scrappy Sisters Mighty Network. So it was during a Zoom call or for a Zoom call. Anyway, I had a bunch of leftover flowers and I figured I could use them here. They kind of match color wise. My only question is, I can see that I purposefully left this corner free so I could add flowers into it. And the question is, what flowers was I planning to add into this? <laughs> was it these or was it these? It might be these ones right here. I don't really know. So we're just gonna like test a few, figure it out. I mean, I could, I could layer the big ones. The big ones fit in there and would be pretty. Uh, so like I could do that, that would be pretty. I can also, cut this one. I'm pretty sure it was this one is what I was thinking. But, okay, let's stick these in here and see what, you know, this way. So we've got time to shine. Your background or your backing is coming off. Okay. All right. And then I was thinking of taking the same flowers and layering some behind this acrylic piece to help it pop out. Okay, so we've got time to shine. And then I'm thinking about sticking in, in here. Here we go. Come on, get under there. There we go. I'm putting in some extra ones over here. So like I've got, those and then I need some of these like brighter color ones for sure so and they do have like jagged lines because they were from a pattern paper although it might hide it under this let's try under this see what happens we got it so we could do it like that and like that so it covers up the jagged part and then this could go just testing it, and then when we make a decision, then we will decide what to do. And yes, I'm including all of you in my decision making. Oops, let's go here. Ugh. Tweezers, always gotta have those tweezers. Okay, so I kinda like it with the same, like the same and the same, and not these, and we'll just save that for another day. Um. Yeah, I think that's probably good. And I'm just going to go with it. Okay, let's do it. Let's just go with it like this. So I am going to grab my roller adhesive and we're going to add adhesive to this top one here first and then stick it back down so it picks up the bottom two. And then we'll go from there. Which I know is kind of a backwards way of putting together clusters and stuff, but it works for me. <laughs> it doesn't, you know, it's fine. 
It's fine. This paper where these florals came from was an older freckled fawn, like uh, four by eight paper pack, um, which I have lots of the papers from the paper packs. I used to subscribe, which I, I only stopped because I just have such a, a stockpile of them. But when I was looking for papers for traveler's notebooks, they had some really great options. And I use them a lot when I work in travel albums. Okay, so let's put the little photo in here of her and her cute little tutu. I had to go because I, okay, so I did my journaling like recently, right? So I had to go and look up what the song was that they danced to because I couldn't, I couldn't remember. Luckily, I found uh, like one of their emails they had sent to me just to say, you know, when her rehearsal time was and blah, blah, blah. And they had listed the uh, name of the song. So that was really awesome to have so that I have that detail in there. And the funny thing is, is you like can't find it. So the song is called Give a Little Love. Um, and it was such a cute little dance, but even when I searched Give a Little Love, I was trying to find lyrics for it and I couldn't find lyrics. So I don't know where that song is from or who it's by. I couldn't find who it was by either. Because there are a lot of songs called Give a Little Love, apparently. So, oh well. At least we know the name of it. <laughs> okay, so we've got that, we've got that, we've got that. So now we just need to do this big piece. Alright, so I'm thinking we will just kind of do the same thing. Alright, we're going to pull all of these to the side. No, oh, that's okay, Caleb. Are you going to go hang out with her now? Now that she's home? Quickest hour of your life. Oh, your wife. Your poor wife. <laughs> oh, okay. So, and then we'll put a little bit here. Okay, I'm trying to make it so I don't get it on the photo part. Where did I just put that? Right there. So that I can still kind of, sort of position it. Apparently I need you to be more on the edge. Um, so I can kind of, sort of, still position it before I stick everything down for real. Okay. So one more time here. Let's just make sure that everything is where I want it to be. So I'm thinking if I do it like right there, and all the jagged edges will be will be hidden. You'll never know that this was the edge of a paper. Okay. I see her all day every day. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I do. Sometimes that's how I feel too. Hence my being like ecstatically happy when, when my kids went to other people's houses. I totally get it. Okay. Whoops. All right, here we go. Let's get these babies down. And right, the tricky part. So I'm thinking where, like right here? Is that where I had you? I'm gonna say like right there. That way we get like the upper right and the bottom bottom left. I know it covers more than that, but still. Okay, let's cut off these little extra pieces. Okay, how long ago did I plan this? Um, so I I planned out the idea of this spread. I want to say in February. So like I knew that I was going to use this to tell this story. I also knew that I was going to use these papers. Um, and I might've even known I was gonna use the flowers. So I like threw all the product in a, in a folder with a sketch that looked kind of like this, right? So I started with that. Then I wanna say maybe a couple weeks ago, um, maybe last month in March, is when I actually pulled it out to find the photos and to do the journaling and all of that. 
Um, I have a bin which is getting significantly smaller and that makes me very happy. I have a bin of stories that I have planned to the point of I have the cards ready to go and I have an idea of what the story is going to be. Um, but I don't have the journaling done and I don't have the photos printed yet. But everything else up to that point is done. Okay, wait, let me get this. Let me get this where I want it to go. And then, and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, it's probably good right there. So my bin is this one right here. See, look at how much smaller it is now. It was like stuffed full. So what I have in here, I'll just show you guys this really quick because maybe you'll find it interesting. Um, some of them I have ready. So like this one, which is a lie because I had to reschedule this. So this is actually going to be not 4.15. It's going to be a different date. Maybe the, the end of April, whatever that day is, April 29th, maybe. Anyway, so I have this one all done. I have the journaling done, the photos done, everything's ready. So when I get to that day on my live, I'm just going to pull these out and put them together, which is kind of fun because it's like there's a pretty significant gap between when I do it and, you know, when I don't. This one is one that I don't have ready to go yet. So let me throw this to the side. So I've got all of the stories I'm going to tell during my live, right, which I've got, I've got, looks like three, and I probably will add a couple more. So I probably, I like to do four to five. Um, and then inside of these, I have products, I have design ideas, I have story ideas, but I have no photos or journaling done. So um, what I've been working on is pulling these out and trying to get all of that stuff done a couple weeks ahead of time. Like I would love to have this whole basket just ready to go so that, you know, I can turn on my camera and pull out some pockets and tell all the stuff that's inside of them. Um, so that is kind of what I'm doing. So therefore, there are some weeks, like this week, when I did my journaling about a month ago, I would say. The event itself was over a year ago, and I just hadn't documented it yet. So sometimes it's nice. Like, I like when products can really help you to remember stories. <laughs> At least they help me to remember stories that I haven't yet told that I want to tell. So I, you know, I'm very appreciative of that. Let's, I wonder if I can get this on here. That was funny. Nope. <laughs> so we'll just, did anything get on there? Come on. I don't want to pull out my wet glue. Let's find out. We're gonna stick it in there. We'll find out if there's enough on there to do something. Okay, let's see if that falls out. Nope, we're good. Okay. Oh wait, Etienne, where's your question? Let me find it. Okay, you're gonna do a blurb trade book for Week in the Life. Kind of missing the product. Yes. Keeps crashing, oh no. <laughs> That's a bummer. Okay, I'm going back. I'm like missing, I'm missing out on so many things. Okay. What do you guys have? Nicole, hey Nicole. Okay, that's I think where I, where I forgot you guys, or where I stopped paying attention. All right. Oh no, not too much. Okay. You ever plan something and then decide you don't want to do it? Mm. Yes. So, um, especially if I wait too long. To tell that story. So an example would be, actually there will be one in this, in this pile of stuff. So generally what I can do is I can take the product that I have set aside to tell a story, a specific story, and I can usually get it to tell something a little bit different um, using the same stuff. So an example would be like, I think what I did recently I had a whole bunch of things planned to tell where I never even did a sketch or anything I just kind of like threw it in a pocket with an idea and a title and then eventually and just changed my mind on what I wanted it to be and did something different with it 
um, I want to say that was with the Habit kit. The sparkly S is so pretty. So pretty. Okay, this is going to go that way. So here we go. Let's do this again. It doesn't, I will say it doesn't happen very often because typically I don't wait to do anything. So I will like plan something and then um, essentially immediately do it. So once I get this bin of stuff done, then I'm caught up to basically what I'm bringing in except for except for my pile of old story kits, which will, when my bin is empty, then Thursday Lives will become Story Kit Crush Extra Edition <laughs> Lives, where I'm just gonna be crushing those kits because I wanna get rid of them. And I wanna get rid of them not in the sense of like, I want them gone, I want them to be used. Like it makes me really sad to have stuff that I haven't used. So that's what's gonna happen to all those. Okay, but yeah, generally I, I do stuff immediately. Whoops. Um, especially, okay, especially if I have like a, an idea in my head of like, I'm going to film this and put it on YouTube. So I've got like my schedule that I'm, I'm pretty strict to adhering and, um, if I know that what I've planned to tell is stuff that I plan to share on social media, then I typically will tell them exactly as I have done them. Um, it's just some of the other stuff that I don't have time or I haven't made the time to finish all the things. Okay, so here's this one. Oh, I wish I knew the date of her dance. I will probably later find, like, go back and find out what the date was of her dance recital and just date stamp it on the bottom because I don't have that and I would like to have that on here. But that, otherwise, this one is, is done. I really like this. It's so pretty. Okay, so those are two. Those are probably the, the two more complicated ones that have more pieces, more moving pieces. And I still have some of these left, but honestly, I'm probably not going to use them. So, bye. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to use it, so I'll just put it away. All right, so these guys can um, go down below. And I just want a clear space before I get out the next one. I don't know. Are you guys... Can you guys work in a space that's that's got a lot of stuff in it? Or do you have to have a really cleared off space? Because for me, I feel like I have to like clear my desk every single time I do a new project. Like I can't, like I got to put everything back away nicely where it goes. And then I can get out my next one. It's just, you know, a weird thing, I guess. Um a smaller roller date stamp. I don't, who, I don't know. Um, doesn't Allie have a small one? Is it, is it, is it her that has it in her video? Cause she has a, a small one or somebody does. And it's so cute. <laughs> Must clear everything. Yes. I love it. Oh, there's Jonah. He thinks he's going to come down and watch a movie. Hey, you're supposed to be in bed, Buster. <laughs> oh my goodness oh he wants to watch a movie okay so this is the um this is the more please kit from feed your craft and i've got this this um stamp that's so cute what's it called good eats is what it's called or am, am i getting a hug and a kiss I'll take one. Come here. Come here. I'll take one. Okay. I love you. Okay. Good night. Go see daddy. You just got a hug. <laughs> He's two and a half and already understands the like, I want another hug. I want another hug. I'm thirsty. I want a book. I want a song. <laughs> All the things. Okay. Where was I? Okay, so we've got the Good Eat stamp, which is all of these little food icons. They're adorable. And I've not used it yet. 
Um, so I want to use it. And I also have this card that's really cute and it's got a bunch of food things. So I kind of want to use that too. So we're, <laughs> I think I'm going to layer them up and just kind of cut these things out, stamp out some backgrounds for them just for funsies and we'll add them into a two by two pocket. And then what I did is I have a picture of Aaron and I, this, I, I chose to document a trip. Um, oh, Etienne, here we go. This is one that I changed my mind on. So originally I was going to tell a story with this. So the, the kit came with, um, the, it said food trip stop number. And that, that was blank. And then all of the stuff, but you only had one of these cards. So I used the digital version and I printed off two more. So I've got stop one, stop two, stop three. Originally with this kit, these icons, this page, so everything minus the photos, I was going to tell a story about uh, going around our, our town and like doing a food crawl basically through town. Um, shortly after I planned that, I believe, because I don't know if this came out before COVID happened, <laughs> like, and everything shut down, or if it was right at the beginning of it when we were thinking it was only going to be a short-term thing, um, which is funny. So I was originally going to do that with it. And then obviously, we're a year and, a, and some later, and that's not going to be a story that I'm telling right now. So instead, I decided to tell a story about going to Epcot with... Um, my husband, my brother-in-law, and my sister-in-law, and traveling around the world and getting different foods and different drinks and all that kind of stuff. So I have six pictures of things that we ate. And really, honestly, it, it ended up being more just like Florida, period, and not as much just Epcot, but I have a bunch from Epcot. So like I have a picture of us at Chick-fil-A. We love Chick-fil-A. And my brother-in-law and sister-in-law had never been before, so we took them for the first time, and it was awesome. And then uh, we went and got these, like, fancy milkshakes while we were there. We went to a Mexican restaurant on uh, my husband and his brother's birthday. They're identical twins. So um, for their 30th birthday, we did this trip. And um, that's just to symbolize going to the Mexican restaurant for their birthday. We went um, to the Japanese restaurant and got sushi they got sushi. I got like teriyaki something because I'm not a huge sushi fan. So I have a picture of their sushi. Um, we went to the Coke store, which is super cool. And on the uh, roof of the Coke store, you can get like Coke float samplers um, or like Coke samplers. So basically like a flight, but of different Cokes. It's super cool. And then we went to whatever this place is called, something Cluck cluck. I don't know. It was a chicken place. And it was, um, oh gosh, I don't remember his name. A famous, a famous chef who, who started that. I don't know if it's a chain or if it's just there, but it's his restaurant. Um, is it Bobby Flay? It could be him. I don't think it's him. I think it's Guy, Guy, whatever his last name is. Ooh, I'm sorry. If you guys are food channel watchers, I am butchering the names and the references of these people and I apologize. It's been a long time. I used to watch Food Channel back in the day. Um but we don't we don't do a whole lot of watching like normal channels anymore. It's all Netflix and all that stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to use some white paper and we're going to stamp out some patterns with them cuz I think that will be fun. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Millie. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. He's playing his switch with you. Oh, <laughs> I and I missed again. I missed so much. You guys, you guys, I'm so sorry. The stalling tactics, right, Jessica? Yes, clever boogers. Yes, okay. So, I am going to figure this out. So, we've got I've got a chicken leg that could be cool for the chicken place. I've got um, is there a hamburger? There's gotta be a hamburger, yeah, hamburger and fries that can be for whatever the other place was that I was talking about. Oh, Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is a hamburger. Chicken place is a chicken leg. I doubt there's a milkshake on here, but we can pretend that something is a milkshake. Oh, we have sushi. That's cute. I don't really like sushi, but I like the look of it. It's so pretty. <laughs> we can do tacos to represent the taco place. I forget the name of it. I have it somewhere and it was really good. Um, we can do 
This looks kind of like bubble tea, but it could also be a Coke. Why not? There's like bubbles in Coke. Okay. <laughs> and right, sushi, guacamole, milkshake. I'm missing a milkshake. You know what? There's a milk and a cup, so that can be representative of a milkshake. I'm cool with this. Looks good. All right. Then let's get my little baby block here and some colors. I'm going to use my distress inks because I like the vibrant colors of them and they typically go nicely with the colors in a lot of future craft stuff because they're super vibrant as well. So I'm going to stick that up there just to give me an idea of what I want to do again. And so these I'm thinking I'm just going to like cut them apart. Some of them will probably make no sense and maybe I won't use them all. Maybe that's what I'll do is not really use them all. But we can do because like these two don't make sense for anything we ate um, and neither does the coffee. So I am going to set these ones to the side. What I could do with these is actually just take them and make them into die cuts because I'm more likely to use them as die cuts than I am to use them in a square like this. Usually when I do squares, I usually like to have um, some kind of embellishment on top of all of them or journaling on all of them or you know something of that like I usually don't just have a flat thing but I would totally turn it into a die cut and put it on a stamp background and that would be <laughs> I don't know why that that makes it all of a sudden okay but you know it's all about that layers and dimension that's what I'm gonna say <laughs> Ooh, what is overpriced A, a what? A rock? A rock box. It's wonderful and make pieces in 90 seconds. Oh, so Etienne, because you you guys make your own homemade pizzas, right? Because um, we just started not long ago and apparently the like pizza, pizza oven things are all the rage is what we're discovering based on uh, my husband is real big into like Reddit. Based on Reddit, those pizza ovens, <laughs> those are what you need. We just, we broil ours. Um, and that seems to work out fine. All right, so we've got that. We've got that. But maybe, I mean, that would be such an awesome gift for Aaron, potentially. <gasps> yes. That's awesome. I love that you that you splurged and got it. Yes. Tell me what your thoughts are on that versus like how has it enhanced your pizza life? I need to know. I hear crying upstairs. That's never a good thing. <laughs> oh boy. Life with kids. Okay, so we got the ice cream, we got the tacos, and I'm gonna do this little teapot and teacup because, oh my gosh, it's so cute. It's so cute. A chicken sandwich. I don't think this stamp has a chicken sandwich, but it does have burger and fries. Yes, I found the burger and fries. <laughs> I just texted the information, that's hilarious. Yes. Seriously, okay, so a lot of times, um, when you go to, when I go to lives, right? Like craft lives, there's all kinds of enabling going on, right? Who would have thought that you would have come to my live tonight and been enabled to go look at pizza ovens? But you know, apparently just saying, I don't own one, so I can't, I can't vouch for it, but apparently they are all the rage. We posted a picture of one of our pizzas on Reddit. Um, and for those of you who don't know what Reddit is, I still don't completely understand it. Um, but it is my husband's social media platform of choice. I don't know if it's just more geared towards like men or if it's just more like, cause I feel like Instagram a lot of times is geared towards women. It doesn't mean that it's not for men. It just has a lot more of that. And I don't know if Reddit is kind of like that, but opposite. Anyway, he posted a picture of our most fancy pizza he's made so far. 
and um, was like so excited that he was going to get upvoted because you upvote things. So you post pictures and stuff on threads and the threads are about whatever topic you're interested in. So there's one for pizzas. And then the people on there basically vote for your post. I think I'm getting this right. And the, the more it is liked, the higher up in the feed it goes. So he posted our pizza and I think he got like five upvotes. <laughs> he was thoroughly disappointed that it wasn't a lot more, which it's fine. The pizza we had was a, um, what was it? It was a goat cheese and red pepper and sausage pizza. We actually have had it at a brewery before here in Michigan. What colors do I want to use? Hold on, I gotta figure out colors real quick. So if I'm gonna go, okay, we're gonna go pizza. So ice cream can go with the milk, right? Cause then now we get like, obviously it's milkshake. That can go with that and this can go with the sushi. So we're gonna do pink for the sushi cause that will be cute. We're going to do yellow for the milk. And then we're going to do super light green for that and then I can just play from here so let's go red for the burgers because right burgers red makes sense to me the chicken mm, the coke will do teal and the chicken will do orange here we go <laughs> I think that's good maybe I want this lighter orange though I don't know we're just gonna go with it so um I don't know what I was saying. Oh, that we had this pizza before somewhere here in Michigan at a brewery. And it was the best pizza we've ever had in our entire life. We love goat cheese. So if you don't like goat cheese, you know, you probably, you will not like it. But if you like goat cheese, put on your pizza because it's amazing. All right. So my goal is to just kind of, uh, I don't know. We're going to build this in and make a pattern here. And I'm totally winging it. But I need this to be like... Um, a two by two is what I was going for. It's going to be a two by two. So this might take me a minute to get all these things done, but that's okay. Cause then I can just chat with you guys. Um, what do I want here? So let's kind of like go like that, I guess. Yeah, that'll work. Mm, I'm probably not keeping you. So sure. Okay. What is the best pizza you guys have ever had in your life? Tell me. I want to know. <laughs> what do I what do I need to tell my husband to make? Oh, good night, Jessica. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Red peppers, goat cheese scones. Oh my god, Caleb, that sounds so good. Yes. I'm all about it. My mother-in-law likes to make, um, she makes roasted red peppers with goat cheese in it. I don't know if there's anything else to it or if that's literally just it um, as an appetizer. And it's the best appetizer I've ever had. <laughs> I always want her to make that. Because it's just delicious. So she'll usually do it for special occasions, which is awesome. Okay, let's see if I've got enough here. Arugula. Hmm. I've never had arugula on pizza before. Okay, I think I need to go like one more bit here. And then that will probably do it for this corner. I don't know why I decided to do this angled, but you know, it'll work out. <laughs> this one lent itself really well to making a pattern. I just want to say that. So, chicken legs good pattern makers. Let's put that one there. And then you need to go there. I feel like if I fill this part in, I can use it from the bottom. Okay, we'll do that. Oh, I need my, my cloth. Cloth, come to me. All right. What else we got here? What else? What pizza is? Just to clarify, is goat cheese equal feta cheese? No, they are they are very different. Um, goat cheese is a lot creamier than feta. 
So feta has like a sharpness to it. I don't know. There's like, um, I can't even really explain it. Like it's almost, it's just like savory. It's like that. What's that six cent or six taste, right? It's like mm, mm, or, mm, something with a U. That is what goat cheese is. <laughs> it is that taste sensory. <laughs> yes. AP flour, oats, rice, and beans. Everyone thinks I'm weird. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't think it's weird to, to bulk buy stuff like that. Not at all. I mean, because you go through it, right? And it doesn't really go bad. Okay, this one. We'll see how this one's going to work as a pattern. So we've got the cute little cups that I think are supposed to be bubble tea. And I'm making them sodas. Because they look kind of like sodas to me. I'm gonna see what Ooh, uh, umami. Yes, that's <laughs> yes, that's the word I was looking for. There is a food truck here that does sausage, pepperoni, basil. Okay, so Mallory, because you're down in Texas, um, so my my brother lives in, um. Oh gosh, why can't I think? Oklahoma. My brother lives in Oklahoma, but he went to Baylor to get his master's. So we go down and visit him usually about once a year, sometimes twice a year. And um, the food trucks down south are the best. I can't even tell you how much I wish our weather could like could like, I don't know what I'm looking for. I lost my train of thought. Support up. I wish our weather here could support as like a serious line of business always because nothing beats food truck food. Nothing. You're right out of San Antonio. Where is San Antonio? Where is that in relation to like the bigger cities, which of the bigger cities are you closer to? I don't, I don't know a lot about Texas. So, um, my uncle, my aunt and uncle in Plano, Texas for many years, I think five years. Um, and when we were kids, so they moved back to Michigan since then, but when we were kids, they lived there. So we would visit Plano usually twice a year to go see them. Um, and then my brother was in um, why can't I think of where Baylor is? It's a very famous town because that is also where, um, Chip and Joanna are. <laughs> what is it called? Oh, clearly I need to stop thinking. Um, anyway, it'll come or you guys will know it. Uh, okay. An hour south of Austin. Okay. Waco. There it is. Thank you, Millie. Waco. Yes. So he was in Waco for a couple years and we used to go visit a whole bunch. I will say that my absolute favorite food truck I have ever visited ever is an ice cream sandwich food truck. It's called uh, Pokios and it was in Waco. I think they have some in Austin maybe because I know it's a chain and they have they're in more than just Waco but oh my gosh it is the best ice cream sandwich I've ever had in my entire life the best it was basically like they make six I think flavors of cookies and they vary them every day and then they had like six flavors of ice cream that they also home make every day I don't know if they home make it every day, but they, they home make it and they switch it up. And then you could pick your cookie and you could pick your ice cream. And the beauty of it is that the cookie was warm. Like, it, like they baked it, took it out of the oven, put on their fancy ice cream and then gave it to you. So it's like melt in your mouth. Oh, just so good. I miss Waco for that. I miss Waco for a lot of reasons because it's a really cool town. But, um, Pokios. I miss Pokios. <laughs> we thought, I mean, we were crazy. We we're like, oh, we should like 
see if we can start one of these in Michigan. <laughs> but like, yeah, you're not going to be making any sales here in Michigan in the winter on ice cream sandwiches. Probably not, right? <laughs> but it was, it was so good. Oh, geez. Caleb, you guys eat way too much ice cream. That's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, it's so good. How can you not? Okay, how am I gonna... Ooh, okay, apparently we're gonna go like this. We're gonna make this kind of wild, I guess. <laughs> we're gonna go wild. Go bigger, go home. I don't know if this is gonna work out, but we're gonna try it. Why not? This is like a tossed um, taco. Tossed taco. Anybody taco lovers out there? I love talking about food. It's fun. I just ate dinner, so I'm not hungry, which helps. If I was hungry, this would probably be a bad discussion. <laughs> so if you're hungry, I really, I apologize. <laughs> they know me by name. So we have a, a place here in town, um, in our town. It's called El Topo. And um, it's a taco bar, which is super cool. And you can go there. It's like a walk-up taco bar. It's fairly authentic to like Mexican street food. Um, and which I don't know that from experience because I've actually never been to Mexico. Although that is going to change this year. So I'm very excited about that. And um, But my sister and her fiance both vouched that it was fairly authentic which is good so we we really like it it's fun this is actually pretty cute this has turned out fine texas about tacos okay so another place mallory someday i'm just going to come to texas and visit you <laughs> and we're going to go to all the awesome taco places so um oh and now i can't think of it torchies do you guys have a torchies by you a torchies tacos so good. <laughs> Homemade yum. Ooh, Caleb, that sounds really good. Aaron would love that. He loves chorizo. It's funny, chorizo was one of the only things that I was like seriously adverse to when I was pregnant with Izzy. Like, you know how you have like aversions and cravings? The only thing I ever craved is water. And... <laughs> I just couldn't even stand anything about chorizo, and it made Aaron so sad. I was like, sorry, I can't. I just can't. Oh, I did way more than I needed. Okay, that's fine. We're getting there. Sorry, this is taking forever, but you know what? It's okay. So here you go. This is how you can take, like, little icons and make your own backgrounds. <laughs> Not everything, I guess, is super quick, huh? The other two that I've got are super quick, so that'll be good. This will actually maybe take the whole time today. Who knows? My wife at everything today. I was very surprised. What? Oh, my wife ate everything today. How is she doing, Caleb? How is she doing? I'm so curious. Sometimes that's why I give you a hard time. Like, be nice to her. <laughs> Maybe it's taking forever. It's fun. It is fun because I can be like, I can actually like look at what you guys are saying and not ignore you. Which is awesome because, oh, I should have offset that. Oh, well, I guess we're going with it now. Um, anyway, so I can just like have some conversation. Then I'll offset it and we'll just completely go against the grain. How cute is this one? It's got like, can you guys even see it that well? I should hold this up. You know, once I get all these stamped out, I'll hold them up so you can see better, clearer versions because it's probably hard for you to see it for it being so far away from the camera. She's doing well. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Especially, um, um yeah, I'm just, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, duck tacos with pineapple salsa. I regretted it later because, oh no. Oh, with the habaneros. Oh my gosh. No, that is the worst. Okay, it's so interesting how hot peppers can, like, 
obviously they, they like burn your mouth and stuff, but they can totally make your fingers feel like they're burning. <laughs> Um, we grow normally. I haven't grown in a while because my children won't let me grow things, but, um, by which I mean, they just dig everything up. So it's just not even worth it. Uh, but we, I don't know. I just, I just stamped that upside down. Cool. It's all good. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, normally we grow jalapenos home like homegrown jalapenos and when you pick them you have to be careful even because they can make your skin feel like it's burning and then don't ever touch your eyes after never ever oh I'm so jealous I'm not jealous okay I'm jealous and I'm not jealous so I'm jealous that you have protection from onions because <laughs> Onions are the bane of my existence. They always make me cry rivers. Uh, and I'm jealous of that. So, yes, in, enjoy that, that protection, that screen of protection for your eyes. I don't actually wear glasses or anything. Um, you know, I was lucky to have really good eyesight. I have a lot of other bad things, so... You know, we take we take the good things we, we have and, I guess, be grateful for those because, you know, every, we all have our things, right? Um, so I have, I have really good eyesight. And I remember as a kid, I always wanted to wear glasses. Like still, and I'm, I'm excited because soon, and I don't know necessarily what that means, but soon I want to get some blue blocking glasses because I stare at screens a lot. And I think that that would be probably good for the health of my eyes. So I want to get some blue blocking glasses. And for the first time in my life, I'll be able to say that I wear glasses because I've always wanted to. I don't know what it is about them. Um, I don't know if I just like the way they look on my face or, um, or I mean, when you're young, I used to think that glasses made you look smart and we all want to look smart. Uh, but now I still really like them. So I'm excited. Blue blocking glasses eventually in my radar. Going to happen. This one's really cute too. Okay. Is this enough? Did I get enough here? We got enough. Yay. The stamping of the backgrounds is completed. And now hopefully when I cut everything out, I won't mess it up. So let's put that guy away. And I don't need that anymore. Or that or that okay and so see like this will go there and this is gonna go here right no there and this is gonna go here on the sushi rolls they'll be so cute all right <laughs> okay so let me see if I can I'll hold these up and I don't know if that's gonna be clear enough but you can see like whoop, trying to look at it on mine to see if it's clear enough on mine so this one has two little sushi roll, well, three little sushi rolls on a plate with two chopsticks. This is the um, hamburger and fries. There's my tossed little tacos. There's the milk and the glass. There is the glass of bubble tea that I have made into soda. And there are the chicken legs. So fun, so cute. Okay, now. Disposable gloves, yes. Onions love water. Yes, so I used to, I thought there was a trick where you could take onions and like run them under cold water and that was supposed to help. I've tried that and it does not help. So maybe that was like an old wives tale. Um, but where did you see that? You said Erica. Uh, you just said something. Where did that go? Next time, chop onions on top of a wet paper or paper towel. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna remember, <laughs> I'm gonna remember that because that's like, it drives me nuts. It's one of the things I hate the most about cooking is that onions make me cry. So that is fantastic advice. Thank you. See you, Caleb. Enjoy the rest of your night. And Ingen. See you guys. Blue blockers. Oh, on Amazon you got them? I was thinking I would have to get them through like an eye doctor. So that's interesting that I could just get them on Amazon. Hmm. 
<laughs> I do really want some. Um, just, just because I stare at screens all day and it would be good for me. I'm just going to do it this way. I feel like this is not the straight edge. That's okay. We'll make it straightish. All right, let's, yeah, you are definitely not straight. I think I just cut you crooked. Okay, so let's go that way and we'll just do that again. So we'll be at the two inches. Of course, my dull blade. Okay. And then I don't want to cut too much off and then mess it up. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, okay, now that I have these all stamped out, let's not mess it up. Okay. So there's the little milk jugs. That's going to go with this ice cream. I'm just going to throw it on there right now while we're here. The rest of this is literally sticking it in the pocket. Like, this is the hard part of this spread right here. Are these cute little backgrounds. Okay, so there's one. Next, we got the tacos. The tossed tacos. This is the way. This is the way. Any Star Wars fans out there? With uh, Maldorian? Such a good movie. Such, not movie. Show. It's a show. Such a good show. Got yours on Amazon, too. Okay. And they're even a tar- Okay, so... Well, cool. See, now I'll actually make it happen. I will get blue blocking glasses because now I don't have to like go through the effort of making an appointment to get them. Cause that's what I was thinking where I was like, mm, someday I'll get these because I don't really feel like making appointments, but yes. So next time I go to Target or something, I'm going to look for them and just buy a pair. That's good to know. I guess they're not like a prescription, right? So that does make sense. I don't know why I was thinking. Oh, well, see, I'm glad I brought it up to you guys because I would have never thought. I just would have never thought. Yes, you named your son after Harrison Ford. That's so cool. I Okay, so I grew up on Star Wars, um, you know, because there's like Star Wars fans and Star Trek fans. Um I like Star Trek, but I never watched it as a kid. I didn't, you know, or I never followed the show or anything. But Star Wars has always been a big thing in our family. Always. I'm not, like, a super fan in the sense of, like, I've read all the books and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I super love it. I've seen all the movies multiple times. And um, when I was a kid, my grandpa used to have the books on tape. Like, on cassette tapes. And whenever we went on family vacations, we would listen to Star Wars in the car. Um, so, like, I, I can't recall any of the stories or if they were just the same as the um, movies. Because, you know, there's, like, books that are similar to the movies, but then there are books that are totally different characters, totally unrelated. Um, I don't remember much about them except for I remember laughing every time the narrator made the Chewbacca noise. Because we thought that was hilarious when we were kids. Um, I don't know. It was really fun. So it's like good memory. Star Wars are, always brings back just really good memories for me. And I love it. Same one. Yes. So this one, I don't know. <sighs> yeah. It, it sometimes doesn't cut straight lines. And it's okay. Like... You, for me, you just kind of like learn to live with it. Um, sometimes I feel like I have to push my thing so like this arm comes out, right? And then that should be a straight line. But sometimes I feel like I have to push almost a little bit extra on this portion in order to get my cuts straighter. I think that is part of it for me at least. Okay, and then we've got... Two inches there, and there's our cups, and the chicken legs. Right, I did it in the corner, so this one's easy. E, Z, P, Z, and then this is done. I really honestly just wanted an excuse to use that stamp set, so thank you for um, humoring me while I stamped a page of little icons. That was fun. I think that stamping can be very therapeutic because it's just, you know, inking and stamping. Um, 
especially onto white cardstock because if you mess up, it doesn't matter. You can just grab some more cardstock. Um, but yes. Okay, so basically this is gonna go into a pocket page, which I will pull out later. Um, and it goes our picture, stop one, stop two, stop three. And I talked about uh, where we ate in the general Orlando area, where we ate inside of Universal Studios and where we ate when we were at Epcot. And then over on this side, we would go Chick-fil-A, which obviously needs to be next to the burger and fries. And then we've got the milkshake, which we'll put next to the milkshake. Then we've got the guacamole, oops, which can go there, which can have that. And then we've got the sushi. Oh, see, and that works. And those three are in the middle too, which has sushi. And then we've got the soda place. <gasps> do I? Oh, no, I do have enough. Okay. Oh, gosh, I was freaking out there for a second. And then that's essentially my page. That's going to be it. I'm not going to put anything else on these. I'm just going to let them be because it was fun. Um, and then I'm not doing anything extra to all of that over there. I'm just going to leave it unembellished. I don't always think like, I don't always embellish everything that I do. And I think that's fine. Um, these guys I will cut up later into ephemera. Just stick those in a cup to the side and that's that. So cool. That one turned out really fun. I, I love those. I think I love those. All right, so we're just gonna pile these so that it's easy to remember what order I had them in when I go and put them in a two by two page protector. So that is a spread right there. And I think that's all I have for stamping today, which is good. Because now I just wanna do these other two quick and easy. All right, so next on the list for today, is, get out there, here we go, is this one. So it's another story that I have using the exact same kit that I was just working with, so the more please. This one I had originally uh, set aside to tell the story about going to get brunch at our local cafe or our bakery downtown. So I've got this Bon Appetit card that's already set up. Um, I've got Oh no, I do need to stamp another page. <laughs> oh no, I already have it. Okay, good. Yay, <laughs> I'm okay with this. Okay, so I've got this one that says our neighborhood eatery that just has a little bit about our place. So the place that we go to here in town is called Crust. And um, it's basically a bakery on the front end and then a small restaurant on the back end where you can get pizza and... Um, all that stuff. Do you know what I totally forgot to tell you guys late earlier when I was talking about the taco place here in town is part of what makes the taco place here in town really cool is it's actually a speakeasy. So uh, you can go into the back and go to a bar. You have to go up to like a Pringles machine and push the right button in order to get into it, which is really fun. So we're switching those around. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, <laughs> this one's so easy. I'm gonna put a little bit of vellum on here and some die cuts. And that's it. So let's cut a piece of vellum first and then we can decide, you guys can help me decide what stamped card to use. I have blue and I have yellow. And we'll figure out together, I suppose, what the one we want is going to be. And the die cuts are these guys. So yeah, maybe an inch and a half will be fine. And you need to be three inches. So I'm just going to put you across the center of the card. I'm using vellum to help um, to help pop it off the backgrounds because the backgrounds can be busy, right? And so to have a little bit of a degree of separation here, that will help. Okay, so we've got the blue card, <laughs> which says sweet and salty, um, with the vellum. And we can do like the orange juice and the little peaches and maybe the glass of water. Right, so it's just like a little cluster. And then this one, again, is that bubble tea. We never drink bubble tea. 
it's honestly probably one of those things I won't really, I won't ever use. So that's blue or, whoops, there's the yellow or we've got the yellow. Are you guys team blue or team yellow? <laughs> the newer Creative Memories trimmer working great. Hmm, with different blades too. That's so interesting. Hmm. I like the blue. Yellow. Ooh. Competing teams. <laughs> Dolphins is great. Yes. Okay. Huh. I'm gonna have to look into the the um you said it was what creating keepsakes or did you oh creative memories, creative memories, right? Because creating keepsakes doesn't exist anymore. Yellow. Okay, lots and lots and lots of yellow. So we'll go with yellow. Oh, Loralee, blue. <sighs> hmm, I'm thinking yellow wins. I like the blue. Yellow, 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 yellow. Blue. Yellow. Blue. <laughs> okay, so actually this is really funny. So I went to a school here in Michigan. Um a school here in Michigan. It's probably one of the one of the schools, if you've ever heard of the school for Michigan, it's the University of Michigan, right? So I went to U of M for uh, college and U of M's colors are blue and yellow. So, you know, it's like, although it's maize and blue because they got to be fancy about it. And um, so like football games is always like maize, blue, maize, blue. And I feel like that's what we're doing right now. Maze blue. I should have called this maze <laughs> just to be funny about it. I put you too low. I don't want you right there. A little bit higher, please and thank you. <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you've heard of the school. I don't know. <laughs> so funny. Anyway. That's where Erin and I met, was at U of M. Thank goodness I went there. It was the third college I went to, or university, in my undergrad, because I just couldn't, I mean, there were extenuating circumstances, so I couldn't, um, uh, yeah. I had to leave the one, and then the other one just wasn't working out, and I eventually ended up here, and had Aaron and his twin brother as my neighbors in an apartment complex. They knocked on my door one night to ask if they were being too loud next door while building Ikea furniture. And the rest is history, my friends. That is how it all began. Actually, we were friends for many years before we started dating because I was dating somebody else and that somebody else was six foot six. So, um, <laughs> not that size, you know, like height is a bad thing or a good thing. He just was, um, I, I suppose probably intimidating. Uh, so that is this one. Super simple. Did I throw that away? I did. What was I thinking? I'm not throwing that away. <laughs> this one. Okay, we're putting that to the side. That's what we're doing with that. Okay, so that is all I'm doing here. And then we've just got one more to go. Yes. Yep, so I went to you of a Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. And funny story about it, actually. Well, it's not really funny. It's ironic. Um, I... So I transferred in to U of M Ann Arbor when I was a junior. Um, I still graduated in four years. So I went to three schools and I still graduated in three years because partially because I just worked my butt off and partially because, um, I don't know, I just, I worked really hard and I went in with some credits. So that helped because when you transfer, you can only transfer, I think it's 60 credits and you need 120 to graduate. So I transferred to U of M and I had more than enough credit. So I actually lost some when I went there, which was kind of a bummer, but I still did it. I still, you know, made it out in all those, in the years that I wanted to make it out of. And, um, but the funny part is, is that I, I truly believe in my core that if I had applied to U of M when I was, um, in high school, I would not have gotten accepted. Um, it's not that I wasn't like a good student or anything. It's just that, you know, I, sorry, I'm going to cut some of this. I just need to figure out where I'm starting from. Okay. Yeah. It's not that I was a bad student. I just was a very average student. And, um, 
when I went to college, I did really good in college, really, really good. So I kind of proved to them <laughs> that I could, that I could cut it at their school. And so I believe that that is why I got accepted to U of M, which is sad because my dad, it's not sad. It's not sad for me. It's sad for my dad. My dad went to Michigan State, which here in Michigan is like, they are really big rivals. So basically Michigan State is like the little brother and U of M is the big brother and they, you know, do all the sporting events and stuff. So my dad went to state and got his undergrad there and of course you know the last thing he wants me being very tongue-in-cheek is for his children to go to his rival school and then I did and he was always like I am not going to wear like U of M dad shirts so don't even get them for me <laughs> so it's funny um when I was transferring, though, I applied to both. I applied to Michigan State and I applied to Michigan. And Michigan State denied me. And Michigan accepted me. So I don't know what, what that has to say about Michigan State. Just saying. They turned me away. Okay, so I cut out a portion of that so I can slip this under. Um, and that's what we're going to do here to make that fun because I really like this pop fizz clink. So this is a story about New Year's slash New Year's Eve of this year. So a more current story, which is kind of nice. Yes, yeah, super rivals. Oh, Mallory, see, and that's so hard to, so, and it depends, like if you change your major from something that's really close, then, um, it's a little bit easier, but yeah, changing majors makes a big difference. I went into school originally. I went to freshman year. My goal was to become an elementary school teacher. I'm really glad that didn't work out because um, I don't think I would be that great of a elementary school teacher. Uh, I am much better teaching adults than I am teaching children. And I know that about myself now. So luckily, I went and I was a camp counselor for a summer after my freshman year and discovered I don't particularly like um, working <laughs> with kids like that. So that kind of, that helped me to figure out that that pathway was not for me. And then when I was at the first school, which I went to Hope College for my freshman year, and that is here in Michigan on the west side of the state, um, it's an, it's such a good school. It was my dream school. And I went for a year and then there, I mean, there were a lot of reasons why I had to leave it. Um, financials. I mean, it's an, an incredibly expensive school. So it just made a lot of financial sense to leave. And then also just some, you know, other life things. So when I was there though, I had, I took a computer science class and I was really good at it. Um, and I had a teacher who told me, like who really tried to get me to do computer science because it's a field that, you know, especially at that time, which would have been, I graduated in 2010 from college. So, you know, 11 years ago, it was a field that there were not a lot of women in. So they were telling me like, oh, you should, you know, this would be such a great field to get to start in. So I really thought about switching and sometimes I wish that I did. I did switch to it, um, but I ended up not. What was I doing here? Because obviously I have, oh, you know what? I was probably just going to do this. That's what I was going to do. Highs, lows. That wasn't all good. It wasn't all bad. Okay, this is an easy one too. So I just have these guys that I can add in here. I've got like celebrate good times. And... These are so cute. I like want to get them all in here, but it might be ridiculous to put them all in here. <laughs> Cheers. I mean, that's not that ridiculous, right? Should I just add them all? What do you guys think? Add them all. I could also put it, well, it doesn't make sense on it wasn't all good, but it wasn't all bad. <laughs> cheers to that. Although cheers to that. I don't know. I could put that there and then I could layer these up here. Maybe. 
it's kind of funny. Computer science to insurance. Oh man. But you know what? That's okay. Do you like being, do you like working in insurance, Erica? Six years for pharmacy. Wow. That is, that is lucky. Yes. Physical therapy, three pro bands. Yeah. Wow. In business. Mm-hmm. Architecture. You know what, though? Doesn't that kind of... Do, do you find that what you learned when you went to school to be an architecture, that it helped you gain some of the skills to do graphic design? Because I imagine that it would, having to use... Because there's a lot of, like, computer programs and stuff like that that you have to use for architecture that I would think would cross over, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. The police academy. Wow. For real, they didn't? That's so crazy. You would think, I don't know. There's like, there's just a lot to it. You know, there's, um, it's, it's interesting to me. So I went to school for elementary education. That's where I started. And then I switched to international business because I thought maybe that. Um, I don't know why on earth I thought international business. I was so anti going into business because my, like, like business being my degree um, or anything to do with business because that was like what my family did. And why do we have to try and be different than everybody like you know I obviously could have probably done very done just fine in business um but you know I was against it so then I eventually landed on psychology so I actually have a degree in psychology is mine and uh the official the official degree is um brain behavior and cognitive sciences so I I majored in that. Um, and then, which brain behavior and cognitive sciences is just a fancy way of saying like, like that I had to do a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of studying the brain. Um, and like the functionality of the brain and like all different kinds of things with the brain. Uh, so that is what I got my degree in. And then I was thinking originally that I was going to try and work for a facility that, um, that helped disabled individuals, so people who needed to learn how to live with disabilities, and that didn't pan out, and then I thought um, that I would go into nursing, so I took some classes to help me do, like, prereqs in order to get into an accelerated nursing program, and I was awful at my classes. Now, that could have just been that I had, you know, instructors that were really, really tough on me. Um, I took a pharmacology class and that was the hardest class I've ever taken in my life. And then I also took an organic biochemistry class three years after I took chemistry. <laughs> so I like, it was really, it was just really hard and not the right move. So that didn't work out. And then um, I ended up going into fitness and then found my way back to business and entrepreneurship, which is essentially what my family what my family has done and what I was very averse to, but you know, we eventually find, I feel like what we're meant to do. We eventually find it. Okay, you guys. So that is, wait, a prison. You could have, wait, what? Gone to a prison? <laughs> wait, me? <laughs> Millie, me? <laughs> like go and work in a prison? I guess I could have. <laughs> that probably would have worked would have been a feasible, you know, hilarious. <laughs> you have a degree in chemistry, own a photography studio, and a YouTube channel. I love it. It's so great. It was the worst class. Okay, well, and, and see, and you carried it through, and you're, now you're a pharmacist. And to know that that was your hardest class, if, that makes me feel a little bit better. Because I was like, oh my gosh, I am not cut out for this. It was so hard. I think I failed my first and only exam in that class. And I studied for that exam like, I can't even tell you, for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and I still failed. It was awful. <laughs> Forensic psychology, that would be really fun. 
it would probably, I don't know. So here's the thing with psychology that I think now is that, um, I love the idea of how the brain works and like how personality, personalities function and all of that kind of stuff that super, super interests me. But I never went into counseling or anything like that because I also, um, I don't know, I, always, I just want to like fix things and I don't, you know, I think that that would be a really tough field to be in when like you just want to like fix and help and you don't always get to fix and help. Um, so I don't know. I feel like that could be, it could just be really hard. And I have so much respect for all the people who do it because I know that it's not, that it's not easy. Um, all right, you guys. So we have come to the end of our night here. We have five completed stories, some that were much more labor intensive than others, but this is what we got. So I'm really excited about this. We started with those color cast design projects which are just pretty, I really like how like classy this one looks, I think is, that's the word I, that that makes me think of. We've got this one about Izzy and her dancing, just super cute. And then I've got the three from all of the feature craft stuff. So we've got the one with all the two by twos that we stamped out. That was really fun. Seriously, I, that was super fun to just stamp those out and chat. And then we've got the one about the local bakery here with some photos. This was so good. These are like um, bagels that they made really fancy. So this one's got apples and bacon and like some kind of peanut butter stuff on it. And this one was like um, a balsamic um, basil, you know, a pesto tomato thing. It was so It is so good. I want to go back there and get some food soon because that just made me hungry and I'm not even hungry. And then with the last one here, which was all about the end of the year. So, which I didn't even tell you guys what this was. So I did um, some journaling about our New Year's Eve, which we just did at home. We Zoomed with some friends. And then um, I talked about the highs of the year, the lows of the year, some of the things that I'm hopeful for for the future. And then our little toast to it wasn't all bad, but it wasn't all good for 2020. Um, and that's just kind of like my wrapping up the year, what I thought sort of thing. So that is that. Will you post these spreads on your Instagram? Yes. My goal, <laughs> my goal is to try and get these photographed tonight so I can just have them. I also have a few from the weekend, from Saturday, that I haven't taken pictures of either. So hopefully I can get some pictures taken and um, get these over on Instagram because yes, I would like to do that. Um, also, I like the accountability of posting them onto Instagram because then I actually remember to take pictures of them and then the pictures just go into like a digital file. So if my house ever burnt down and my albums all went with it, I would always have at least a digital version <laughs> of that spread available to me. So I could like recreate some kind of book in that sense. <laughs> at least that's what I think. Anyway, it's so funny. I'm glad I'm not the only one who thinks about that, Stephanie. Because, <laughs> yeah, I'm always like, okay, if my house burns down or, like, my photos fade or, you know, I put something on a spread that's not archival, like, whatever. It's fine because I still have photos of all my spreads. So it's totally okay. Anyway. Can you share how you store your photos? Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's funny because I store mine on, um, Shutterfly right now. So I can, eventually I need to do some kind of like video about that. Um, and then I, I only download the ones off of there that I'm using for specific projects. So everything just stays kind of in a cloud space thing. I'm working on also getting them onto Amazon photos. Um, it's just complicated because I've, it's not complicated. It's time consuming. I guess I like to use the word complicated for time consuming, but it's time consuming. Um, because I have years and years and years and years of photos and folders and stuff like that on Shutterfly that I need to like transfer over to Amazon photos. So I have them in two places because that's really what I would like is to have them in two places. So that is, um, <laughs> Yes, that is, I can, eventually I can share a video of how I have Shutterfly organized. Because 
because <laughs> it is organized. It just, um, you know, I can do that. And then I can show you guys how I organize my projects because mostly what I do on my actual computer is projects. Like I would have a folder that is literally called whatever this, I had this called, maybe highs and lows. So I have a folder that would say like, feed your craft. And then it would say, you know, what a year, because that's the kid I was working in. And then I'd have a folder that says highs and lows. And then in that folder, I would add in any of the photos I'm going to use, any of the digital elements that correlate to what I've got here to help me plan it. So like everything is in a digital file in the same sense that when I work on projects, they are in literal envelopes. It's like imagine the envelope, but a digital version. And that's essentially how I organize my projects, if that makes sense. No, Crystal. What? <laughs> yes. I know. This is the silly, silly shutterfly. Yes. Do I have on there for shutterfly? I don't even remember that, Mallory. I'll have to look that up at some point. Um, but yeah, I was actually just talking on Instagram today. I should like turn you guys for whoever's still here. You can just chat. I'll turn you so I can actually see you. Oops, sorry. Shaky, shaky, shaky. Okay. Hopefully I don't turn the actual phone off as I do this. Okay, there we go. Hello. Um, so I was talking on Instagram today about workflow because I, I posted a picture yesterday that was like my table just filled with packets of stories. And I was like, I'm going to get all of these told today. There's like 14 of them and my goal is to get them done um, and filmed. So I, I filmed them all and I made them all. And anytime I share something like that, immediately the question is like, how do you do this? Like, what is this? How do you get so much done? And it's all a process, right? So like those 14 stories had a lot of process that happened before we got to 14 packets here on my table and definitely before we got to 14 projects done. So I talked a little bit about that on Instagram today and then realized, you know, I don't even have, like, I don't have anything that, that shows that like the visual of like, okay, so let me just show you like a vlog style, like hyper sped up, you know, here's the project planning part. And then like, okay, now this is done. We're going to go over to my desk and I'll, I'll screen share with you to show you like, what do I do now? Because that middle portion is the portion that I don't really have anything for. Like, how do I grab the photos and put them into um, folders and then take that and turn that into a digital version of the page and then print from there? You know, because that's where most of the work is happening is right there on my computer. So like there's this portion of the planning, then the computer portion and then the actual putting it together. So mostly what you guys are seeing is the planning and the putting it together and not the middle. Now, I feel like the middle portion doesn't really need to be seen every single time, but it might be nice to have a video that I can reference to say like, hey, if you wanna know like what happens between this and this, go check that video out and that'll give you some ideas of what I'm doing behind the scenes. Um, yeah, because you know, it's just computer stuff. And to see it again and again is is boring, I think. So I wouldn't watch it over and over again. <laughs> so I doubt that you guys want to either. But I don't mind doing it like for one. So, you know, that is that is that. Yes. Sorry, I'm reading your stuff. Um interesting. <laughs> Mallory, I don't even know what one that is. I did just do one on Patreon recently. So if you're over, um, if you're one of my patrons over on Patreon, you can check out like a behind the scenes of how I put together a week of Project Life. Um, and that is a pretty good indication of like, here's how I select my photos and here's how I design it on the computer and then print it out. And then, you know, then there's the process video of how is it put together. So there is, you know, there is that over there on Patreon. Um, but I probably should do something a little bit more, you know. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> you guys know my videos better than I know my videos. <laughs> Patreon. Yeah, Stephanie. So Patreon is, um, it's a paid like member group. So it's basically, um, I don't know, it's kind of like a Facebook group group and a YouTube channel-ish 
kind of like put together. And um, members, so patrons, uh, have like a monthly um, subscription, I guess, to the group is how I would put it. And then in there, I do extra videos and some behind the scenes stuff and I give away templates for things that I make. So like a lot of times if I'm making something, I didn't use anything here that was a template today, but a lot of times if I'm making stuff that has a template that goes with it that I just created in Photoshop for myself, then I'll just throw that on there and say like, hey, if you want to use it, here it is. Um, so it's pretty cool. And I have a, there's a Facebook group that goes with it. So it's just, it's a really fun thing. And I, if you want to know more about it, there is a link in the description box that you can click on and check it out. And it will tell you like, right now I have two tiers. So it'll tell you what is included in the different tiers and cost structure and all that stuff. Um, but it's pretty fun. It's a, it's a really cool place. A Slytherin. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. I am a Slytherin. <laughs> if you're ever wondering, what my house is. That is my house. <laughs> yes. Oh, you are. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I saw your question mark. Yes. So Stephanie over on Patreon, go on there. And, um, if you haven't seen it, there is a video that I posted two weeks ago. I want to say that was like a behind the scenes for a project life spread. Um, so if you, if you haven't seen it, you can check that out and that will give you a little bit of like background stuff. Enemies forever. You're a Ravenclaw. Well, isn't like everybody Slytherin's enemy? That's so unfair. We have no friends. We're just, we are independent, strong leaders. That's it, I suppose. <laughs> and determined. Yes. Yay, Lisa, you're a Slytherin too. And Erica, yay. See, okay, I'm not alone. Not alone in my greenness here. <laughs> I love it. Also, I just took the, um, is it Myers-Briggs personality test? The one that has like four letters or five letters. I just took that because my sister-in-law is encouraging everybody to take it. And I found out that I am a, if you know the numbers, I-N-F, I-N-F, J, I-N-F-J-A, <laughs> introverted, uh, I-N-F, feeling, judging assertive apparently that's my personality type which is really fun so um if you guys eventually because i'm gonna end this i won't see it too much but um i'm curious to know everybody is now now that i know what these numbers kind of mean it's very intriguing i'm trying to get my husband to take it so we'll see ian tj Woo! i'm glad i'm glad there's another j i found like are most people uh, P, what is that? Um, prospecting? Is that what it is? No. I forget what the P means. Because <laughs> J is judging. P is something else. <laughs> I don't think it's prospecting. Um, but, yes. I-N-T-J. Interesting. Guys, okay, so fun. Personality testing. Yes, it's so fun. INFP. I feel like most of my family, most of our family is an INFP. Yes. Like my sister-in-law was texting me and she got all of our other family members to take it. And um, most of them were all the same, which is super uh, interesting. Perceiving. Yes. Perceiving. That's what it is. Or yes. What is it called? Uh, you can Google Myers-Briggs or the one that I took is not technically Myers-Briggs. It was a free one, which I think was like 16personalities.com, which probably means like maybe my results are wrong, but also, I don't know. They also could be right. I mean, when I read the description, they nailed it. So like I read that and felt convicted. So, <laughs> so also, you know, it's interesting. So yes, look up like 16 personalities or look up um, Myers-Briggs. And if you look up Myers-Briggs, you might find the 16 personalities one, the free one. Um, and then there's also the Enneagram. So Enneagram's really cool too, which gives you a number with a wing. And so usually with personality tests, you'll see either one. So you'll see like the five letter one or you'll see the number. So if it's the letters, it's Myers-Briggs. And there's another person two that I think did it or did the, the same test. I don't remember. Somebody less 
less known, but they're like the same exact test. And then the number one is Enneagram. So yeah, so like Michelle, you're a one wing three. I'm an exact split between a one and a three. Um, so I suppose that means like, I read that basically you just need to like do further testing <laughs> to find out like which one are you really? But I just left it at like, I'm just both, I suppose. <laughs> no, it's not. I've been researching the negatives and it's not good. <laughs> no, don't look at the negatives. Also, sometimes I find that with personality testing, when you look at, and I, you know, I went into psychology, so I love personality testing. Um, so when you look at the negatives, that can oftentimes be really convicting as well, right? Like, um, like they nailed it, but also like all of my weaknesses feel exposed. Um, but what I like about a lot of them is that they will then give you like reading or advice, I suppose, or like things to help you work through the negative sides. Um, yeah. So I don't know, but yeah, you can get really caught up in like the negative stuff. So Janelle, don't do that. Don't get caught up in that. <laughs> That's so interesting that you can relate to each other better. Hmm. Hmm. Personality isn't permanent. And yes, that's so true too. Like our personalities change totally. 100% they change. You know, depending on um, what we, like what we make important to us, what we spend our time on, who we spend our time with, I think a lot of things can alter personalities um, and, you know, change them over time for sure. Um, so yeah, I that you're very right about that. Like you can't get too caught up in like this is me and this is always me. But there might be aspects of that that are that are just innately you. Um, you know, which is interesting. So personality stuff, so fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. I know, I always I felt like one little word, the one little word workshop has been so interesting this year because I feel, um, I'm the youngest of the group, right? And my topic is, um, a deep topic. It's, it's not an easy, nothing is easy, right? Nothing is easy, but it's not, um, it's looking at like negative things, you know, and trying to make changes to those negative things. And, um, I just felt like, so much like imposter syndrome, especially in the beginning of the workshop, because like there are some just really amazing women that are helping to lead the workshop this year and to be counted in amongst them felt like, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm not on the same plane, um, which is one of those things that like letting go, right? Because that's my whole thing is letting go. So letting go of feeling like I'm anything less than what I am and embracing the opportunity and also embracing that, you know, I have a voice and experience. And sure, I may not have all the same number of years, but wisdom doesn't always come with years. So not saying that I'm like super wise, just saying I am wise, but you know, you all know what I mean. <laughs> So it's just, it's been interesting. It's been a really cool experience to be part of it um, and to get to know the other ladies in the group. It's been, you know, such a blessing and an honor this year. But anyway, all the things. You guys, Thursdays are the best. We just talk about everything. Um, you guys are just my friends and we just hang out and we chat about like everything we want to talk about. But I need to get going because I need to take pictures of these things and then I need to sit down because I've been standing for a long time. So... <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. So thank you all for coming and hanging out and um, being my posse. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I love it. So, yes, I'm going to head out of here. I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening or start to your day or whatever, you know, time. Enjoy your dinner if it's dinner time and enjoy TV if it's TV time. And if it's a work day, I hope you enjoy work. <laughs> you know, there's always something good and I hope that you guys just have a great night I will um see you guys around all the places as usual uh Instagram tomorrow and YouTube tomorrow will be story kit crush so 
looking forward to telling some stories about connections. All right, you guys have a good one. Um, I'm gonna, I have to like be all weird to turn this thing off. So I apologize for that and good night.